All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the auth service file and what exactly this is responsible for. So the auth service file is responsible for creating a user or and finding a user and returning it back to the strategy file. Okay, I know it doesn't really make sense to create a user and find a user inside auth service, but that's pretty much what it needs to do because if the user, like I said, the Discord strategy is going to call this auth service and it's going to need to return the user back. If no user is returned, then the user is not going to be able to log in. So that's why this is very important. Okay, now what I'm about to do is going to be a little bit, it might be a little bit confusing, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a user module because I don't want to... I don't want to imp I don't want to create the user inside of auth service. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user service and let the user service take care of creating and searching for users. It makes much more sense because all of that stuff belongs under the user domain. Okay, the auth service will just use the user module. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. So we're going to go ahead and generate a user module. Okay, so that'll create a module for us right over somewhere here. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to move the type ORM stuff inside utils. And it should auto update for me. If it doesn't auto update the path, uh, the import paths for you, you will need to make sure you, uh, you, you will need to make sure you, uh, you configure that yourself. Okay, because we moved all of this stuff into a new folder. But I think the only thing that you'd really need to modify is this uh, this import right over here, these imports right over here, which is uh, where you are importing the entities, which is inside app module. Okay, see how it's now slash utils slash type orb and not just type orm. Okay, so inside user, I'm gonna go ahead and create a. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing that I did previously with auth, uh, but instead what I'll do is I'll just manually create everything. So. We'll go ahead and create the controllers and the services. I'm not going to create a controller right now. I'm only going to just create the service, okay? So for the service, we just need a user service.ts, okay? Uh, and we're going to need to uh, create a class for this. So let's do this real quick. So injectable. So this makes it so that our class is going to be able to work with dependent dependency injection. So it's very important we set this up. So class service. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create an interface. And this interface is going to represent uh it's it's basically going to represent an interface for our user service class. Okay. So let me just do this. Or user.ts. Okay. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to create an interface called iUserService. Okay. And this is a method called uh, programming to the interface because what we're going to do is we're going to create an interface, define all of the, uh, we're going to define all of the abstract methods inside this interface, and then we're going to implement this interface uh, inside our inside our user service class. Okay. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and have a create user method. We're going to have a find user method. Uh, and then I think that's all we'll need for now. We won't, we won't really need a delete user. Um, so we'll just have these two methods for now, search and create. And we're going to go ahead and implement I user service. Okay. And because we are implementing an interface, we need to make sure we implement all of its uh, abstract methods, create user and find user. So we'll do that. And then we'll do that. Okay. So pretty much the reason why we want to do this is because we want to program down to the interface. Because let's say, for example, if we needed to modify something in our in our in our service, right? We could actually just easily swap out the interface without having to actually worry about uh, implementation details, which is why it's a good thing to program to the interface. When you program down to implementation, you have to worry about changing a lot of the the, the business logic, and it just becomes a, a nightmare to do so. So when you program to the interface, all you need to do is just create another interface, swap them out, and it'll literally have the same exact methods that it's calling. So you don't have to worry about the implementations. So it'll save you a lot of time when you're programming. 
Okay, this is a very common practice uh, when you're working with, uh, you know, frameworks like Nest.js or even Spring Boot. So I would highly recommend uh, going along with this. Okay, so what's next is we need to actually implement the create user and find user method. Okay, to do this, we're going to go ahead and we need to uh, we need to get the user repository. So remember, the repository API allows us to interact with the actual data from the database. OK, that's how we're actually that, so the, you can think of the repository as a bridge between the service and the database. OK, so how do we actually use a repository? Well, we can use a repository by first injecting a repository into the class that we need to use it. So we do that by using the inject repository annotation and we specify the repository that we want to that we want to inject. So we want to inject the user repository. So we're going to go ahead and import the user entity like this. And then we're going to set this as private read only. We're going to call this field user repository. And we're going to type annotate it as a repository and pass in the user as a generic type. It's going to give us, it should give us an error. I'm not sure why it's not giving us an error. Uh, let's see. Huh, it should have given us an, it should have given us an error because we didn't import user in here i'm not sure oh i, I know why it's because we didn't we didn't uh we didn't um provide user service inside here yet okay let's do that okay because in, in, in order for us to actually use user service we need to add this to the provider so we let's go over here and let's go ahead and provide so we're going to need to add a token. So there's two ways that we can do this. We can actually just do user service just like this, and this would work just fine. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use tokens instead. So we're going to do provide user underscore service, and then use class user service. OK, now you know what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and create another enum to represent our services. So that way we don't use hard-coded values. So inside constants.ts, we're going to create an enum called services, and I'll call this user. I'll just call this, I'll just call this user, and I'll label it as user service. So if I go over here, you can do services.user, just like that. Okay? Now it's still giving, it's, it's, it's like I said, this error is normal. And the reason why is because it's saying if user repository is a provider, is a part of the user module. So what we need to do is we need to import the type or module inside the user module.ts file. And we need to call for feature and we need to pass in an array of entities that we need to use uh, based on the repository. So since we're using the user repository, we need to add in the user entity like that. And the error should go away just like that. Okay. So now that we have created the user service, let's, let's just slow down a little bit. Let's just explain what exactly just happened, what we just did. Okay. So the user service is a class that implements an interface called I user service, which is right over here. Okay. And what we need to do with this service is we need to go ahead and connect to the, well, not connect, but we need to interact with the database. Uh, we need to interact with the user table specifically. And we can do that by injecting a repository, the user repository specifically. So now that we have injected the repository, we can actually reference user repository and we can call a bunch of methods that will act upon the user entity, which is just the user table in the database. OK, regarding the user module.ts, we needed to make sure we provided the user service as a provider for this module. OK, and we passed in an object inside this array. And this object has two properties, provide and use class. This provide property, this is just the name of the token, which is just user service. So in order to understand this, you need to understand that Nest.js uses dependency injection and it uses uh, inversion of control. Okay, so Nest.js underneath the hood has a has a container that keeps track of all of the dependencies. Okay, with dependency injection, you pretty much are just injecting the same instance 
to every single class instead of creating multiple instances whenever you need a certain uh, uh, whenever you need a certain object or or like a certain instance of a class. Okay, so let's say for example with user service, let's say auth service and some other. Uh, so let's say the uh, let's say the auth module and some other module might need to use user service instead of creating an instance of user service like this like new user service what we do in nest.js instead is we use dependency injection to inject that service okay so everywhere that we inject that service it's going to be the same instance so we don't have to create new instances every single time we need to use user service okay so that's what's going on right over here and the class that we're specifying is user service so that way we so that way this this user service token right over here is associated with this class okay now let's go ahead and actually inject user service and let's see what happens so i'm just going to go ahead and console log the user and i'm going to console log find user like that okay we're going to go inside the auth service now and we're going to go ahead and actually inject user service inside here. So constructor inject, we use the inject decorator and we just pass in the services that user token, the same exact one that we have for provide right over here. We're going to pass it over here. We're going to do private read only uh, user service. And we're gonna type annotate this, not with the user service class, but with the interface that user service class implements. So I user service. And this is what's going to allow us to program down to the interface, okay? So let's say for example, if we wanted to change the interface up, right? We can just get rid of, let's say for example, right? What we could do is we can actually just swap out the interface between I user service with something else have the user service class implement that interface and inside our inside our auth service class we don't need to worry about changing implementation details because it's just going to call the same exact methods okay we don't have to worry about whatever we don't have to worry about the implementation of i user service methods at all okay it's giving us an error and the reason why is because user services uh user service is not found inside our auth service context so we need to go inside auth module and we need to first do a couple things let's import first let's import the user module okay that's not going to get rid of this error but that's one of the things that we need to do next what we're going to do is inside the user module we're going to go and add the exports which is an array and we're going to export user service like this and that error should go away okay because we are exporting this we can now use it inside the auth module because we also import it as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. 